Well, hi, good morning. And uh, good morning it is. Cold outside, sun shining. That's great. Now, my plan here today was to continue on with the alignment process, even though I've had difficulties getting through it. A few things have not worked out. I've noted a few oddball things like a positive grid potential on one of the tubes, stuff like that. But I did want to finish the entire procedure, so I took a look in the manual just before turning on the cameras here to get ready for this. And guess I'm at the I'm at the end of the procedure already. It's, it's done. To my surprise, it's done. So next stage for me in doing this is to get much more familiar now with the circuitry of the radio and the like. And uh, so today we're going to be concentrating on some diagrams in the video. Don't know if I'm going to get to any work on this radio at all. I'm going to work my way through some of the information in the manual and try to perk up my uh, my knowledge about how this receiver really works. So, um, so if you don't want to look at a schematic and other stuff, uh, this might not be the best video for you, but if you want to go on a tour through it with me, that's great. Just bear in mind, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here. So let's take a look at the uh, manual here. Okay, so here's the overall circuit diagram. And uh, I, I found something going on in, in this area. I'm not sure what. Something throwing this part out. Couldn't tune T5 properly, which maybe I just didn't do it right when I was trying. Or maybe there's something wrong in, in here. Some stuff just didn't seem to work out in this area of the receiver. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just, I'm um, lucky I don't have to work my way through this schematic and try to understand it. If that were the case, I would never understand it. This is really quite complicated for me. Uh, I would need a lot of hand holding. And I am getting, frankly, I am getting a little bit of hand holding from uh, an engineer friend of mine. Uh, but I'm trying to not read his emails now too. <laughs> he's writing, he's writing emails that are just as complicated as looking at this schematic. So, but I think if I look at something else here that's in the manual this guy, a block diagram. I think this is going to help me and this I think is where I'm going to spend the bulk of my time here. Let's see if I get a little better better on the screen. There we go. Okay. So you saw that if I get in a panic I can push F11 and exit if I need to. Otherwise let's carry on here looking at this uh, block diagram. First of all, wow, there's a lot of blocks on here. There's a lot of little boxes in this radio. Holy smokes. And hopefully my cursor is visible. Oh, yes, it is. Good. So right away I'm looking at this diagram. I, I, I see a thing up here connected by a line to stuff down here. So there's quite a separation in the way they've laid this out. Now, of course, that's forced by the size and shape of the piece of paper that they're drawing this on. But nevertheless, something here, something down here. See, this looks like something here, this looks like something here. So let's go through it. Oh, look, there's the plug and the power supply. Okay, we got, we got through that part really quick. <laughs> let's just start up here at the antenna and work our way through. So what do we got here? We've got the 300 ohm antenna or the unbalanced antenna input going into here, fed through two tuned circuits and then an RF amp and another RF amp. So there's, there's quite the front end here. And to me, the front end is everything ahead of the mixer. So look, there's a lot of stuff here going on. Now, down here is the oscillator to provide the local oscillator for mixing. Okay, that's great. Come up, what's going on down here? Very variable capacitance diode. Oh, never even heard of that. Variable capacitance diode. So they're using that in effect to trim this, uh, I guess we can call this a tank circuit here, I think. They're using this to trim it and cause the local oscillator to move just a little bit. There's the AFC control here. Okay, so exactly how this is working, I don't know, but there we are. Variable capacitance diode. I'm going to keep my eye open for that on the schematic. Into the mixer with the local oscillator and the signal coming in through the IF, dump, 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 all the way down to the 
third IF amplifier. Okay, so is this the third? This be T3? They didn't bother putting the uh, T numbers on here. So this is the kind of thing that drives me nuts on these diagrams. So out of that T something, and what is coming out? What's coming out is 10.7. 10.7 IF coming out, coming down here, fed into the first limiter. Okay, from there, oh look, now you can see it right in the block diagram, what I discovered when looking at the schematic, that <coughs> the signal is split at this point. Part of it goes down through a discriminator. Yeah, I remember looking at that. And then all, all of this is just the muting stuff. So, so this is all about setting up the uh, hiss removal between stations. Okay. Now, so all this. So isn't this T5 here? <clears throat> I think this was T5. And then we signal from here actually skips around and finds its way to the second limiter, which is really another first limiter, isn't it? Really? Really? This is quite misleading, isn't it? First limiter, second limiter. You'd think they're in series the way it's shown. Okay. Still 10.7 into another discriminator, which is a form of detector. And then test point two shows up here. Test point two here, test point one here. So test point one is basically at the end of the IF. Test point two is after the discriminator. So in here, we should have the whole signal and uh, a whole composite signal would be here. That'd be the left plus right, the left minus right, the 19 kilohertz pilot, and even the SCA signal. If you don't know what SCA is, look up FM SCA and you'll be surprised to find out where your elevator music's been coming from all these years. They still play music in elevators? I don't know. Okay, uh, now let's see. Things are splitting here. Why are they splitting? Where are they going? So they're probably splitting because in fact the composite signal is being split. Uh, that's probably what's happening in here. You know, and here's the speakers down here. So, I mean, you got to guess that this is the audio you're listening to coming back through here. 19 kilohertz phase. <coughs> 38 kilohertz. 38 kilohertz oscillator. So I could see the 38 kilohertz Let's we can even call it a switching frequency is showing up here. Self matrix detector. Okay, never heard of that. Never heard of that. Uh, De-emphasis is a uh, noise reduction technique, uh, very similar to Dolby in a sense. And I think the uh, FM signal is sent with the treble emphasized, and then here in the receiver you de-emphasize the treble and at the same time you de-emphasize the noise, the annoying part of the noise. You get a little quieter output here. Uh, audio amplifiers. Okay, we're not going to worry about that. We'll go back up here. One half six u eight nineteen kilocycle amplifier composite cathode follower. What are they hinting at here? Composite cathode follower. I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to say. The uh, composite signal uh, comes out uh, in a cathode follower arrangement out of this tube here. I don't know. So we'll go this way. Oh, clearly, this is a 19 kilocycle tuned transformer. So this is basically a radio in the radio now. Uh, that may not be the best way to put it because the 19 kilocycle is not quite a radio frequency. I suppose it is. I suppose they all are, depending upon what you do with them, but that's that's just above your hearing range here. At least most people, I suppose the odd person. In fact, I heard that through some Russian experiments it was discovered that human beings can hear all the way up to 60,000 hertz. You just have to make it loud enough. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> so, but normally, no, you wouldn't hear it. You can't hear this. What's going on here? It's detected here. Multiplex control logic. 
Multiplex control logic, what is that? Well, I'm getting quiet here because this is really a noise detector. Multiplex control logic. Okay, I got no idea what they're talking about here or here. Okay, so anyway, 19 kilohertz is detected here. Should mean they're converting the 19 kilohertz into a DC symbol, a DC signal. Amplifying it. Hmm. Going through that little transistor. Trigger the light. Oscillator on off control. So that must be the front panel where I'm switching from mono to stereo. So what if it's off? If it's off, there's nothing coming through here, I guess. Well, what is coming through here? Uh, for, I don't know. After this detector? Uh, I'm not sure at all. There's something coming down here. So the 19 kilohertz is coming down here. 38 kilohertz oscillator control. So my, my guess is this is tuned to oscillate at 38 kilohertz. And the 19 kilohertz is used to phase a line and lock in the frequency of the 38 kilohertz so it's uh, in step with the 19 kilohertz pilot sent from the transmitting station. That's how I think this is operating. That goes in here. Oscillator control. Oscillator. Oscillator control. Okay, well, I'm, my story is slightly different, but virtually the same. Just got to circle these two boxes. And what's coming out of here has got to be 38 kilocycles. So 38 kilocycles all properly synced up with the transmitted signal. Coming into this thing, transformer. I don't know how this would work exactly. And then we have the self-matrix detector. Oh, boy. And then on out into the audio amps. Now we know the separation is good in this, pretty good. I don't think there's problems down in this area. If there's anything not quite working right, it's probably because I just didn't adjust things properly yet. Phase adjustment. There's probably phase issues through these circuits. And you need that uh, 38 kilohertz switching frequency uh, running timed exactly with the incoming uh, FM station through the 19 kilohertz, through the use of the 19 kilohertz pilot. But there's probably phase issues, and so this gives you a chance to push the phase a little bit back and forth, and get it lined up real nice coming through here. All seem to be working fine. The part that doesn't seem to be working is back here. Um, Throwing this muting switch in and out didn't seem to do anything. It doesn't mute anything. It doesn't look terribly important. Um, if this is T5, I couldn't tune it. Made this not work. Maybe I can't tune it because there's a defect in the coil and the components around it or tubes going in and out of it. No, they don't show any tubes. Yeah, they do. 6 B and 8. So these, these are uh, worth checking. Actually, this guy right here, 6B and 8. Wait a minute. I think I did check this guy already. 6B and 8. If there's shows up somewhere else, I think this is a three-part two. 6B and 8. And I checked it, and it's working. I didn't check this guy. Oh, I'm sorry, not that guy. It would have to be... Well, it would have to be... This looks like the only tube in the chain here. Um, so when we look at the signal coming out here at test point one, it looks good, but it wasn't broadband enough. That's something I have to go back and adjust all these coils up here to get it to be a more broadband response coming through here. I think I've got it too sharp. Um, the tuning meter. 
Well, they don't. They don't have the um, magic eye uh, shown here. We can assume it's just right here too. And there's something going on with this tuning meter, and it could be everything from a just a loose wire because it works sometimes and doesn't work others to something more sinister in here. But again, it's just a tuning meter, and especially with that magic eye. You're, you're, you're kind of golden anyway. You don't even need the indicating meter. So we're going to hunt for problems. We should probably start our search right here. Look at the signal at test point one. The signal at test point two, what, what is that? It's gone through a discriminator, so it's it's going to be the audio signals. How can that be? A tuning meter on this side of the discriminator. Is there more and more detection going on that I missed? Whoops. More detection? No. Just a big composite signal coming down here. And at this point, <clears throat> a lot of magic happens right in here. The self-matrix detector and this stuff, a lot of magic takes place. Here. The emphasis, that's kind of interesting. The output of the receiver seems to be muffled as if there's too much de-emphasis, but I don't think that's really the problem. I think the problem is really up here, I believe, with an insufficient bandwidth. I think that will peak up the uh, treble, but I'm not absolutely sure about that. You know, it's an FM receiver. It's not a not an audio receiver. The it's just it's not an audio receiver. It's not a AM AM receiver. It's quite different. That much I know. I know that much. So I really think we got to go hunting around in here. So, like I said, I think a signal strength meter. Oh, tuning meter. Signal strength meter. Okay, hold on. Back up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody, turn back, turn back. Okay, so here we are. This makes more sense. Before detection, um, somehow a signal is peeled out of here, out of this tube, and it fires up signal strength meter and the multipath indicator. The AGC is based on what this meter is doing. Oh my. Does that mean if this meter is not indicating, the AGC is not working? The operation here is dependent on everything ahead of it. If I remember right, I had no problem tuning all this stuff. We're gonna, I guess this is T1, T2, T3, T4. Yeah, problems with T5. So the only thing about the signal coming down through this line is that the bandwidth is too narrow. Why would this come and go? Wow, it's all pretty close together, isn't it? All this stuff is all pretty close together trouble with it all. I think we need to look at the signals in test point one and the signal at test point two. More importantly, test point one and maybe what's coming out of here if we can get a look at this. Kind of put a scope on all these stuff and kind of poke around through here. See what's up. Okay, that's my game plan. We'll just kind of, kind of ever broadening circle out of here. That would be a spiral, uh, and just start poking around these parts and see what we can find. Everything from tube voltages to signal path. See uh, so what we got. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go away, go away. Back we go. Okay, so I think I need to take a moment and set everything up so we can start doing that. So that's what I'm going to do.